Hello, I'm Mark Sweeney, the Principal Deputy Librarian of the Library of Congress. I want to thank you for joining us to celebrate this milestone occasion. 2020 marks the 20th year since the legislation was passed establishing the Veterans History Project under the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. With over 111,000 collections of U.S. veterans who served from World War I through the recent conflicts, We've learned that there are many ways one can choose to share their personal experience and express a firsthand narrative. For Emmy-nominated songwriter Roxanne Seaman, what better way to pay tribute to her late father, a World War II veteran and former mayor of Great Neck Estates, New York, than through song? Joining her on this special occasion are two performers, daughters and granddaughters of veterans. I'll let Roxy share a bit more about who her father was and what inspired the song. Thank you, Roxy. In 2014, my father, Murray Seaman, gave me a DVD of an interview he did talking about his experiences as a veteran in World War II. Two years later, I found this video floating out on YouTube. And each time I came home to visit, we'd sit at the kitchen table and watch it together. What we went through in World War II, what the Army went through, and what the public went through, too, is simply a source of inspiration that revives our faith and our confidence in the American people and what they stand for. My father, Murray Seaman, lived to be 103 years old. And through the Veterans History Project, his stories will live on forever. It was always fascinating to hear my dad telling these stories as if they had just happened yesterday. They were packed with names and places and inspiring tales with fellow veterans in the field. He spoke of Casablanca, Naples, Anzio, Marseille, the Queen Mary, sunken ships with turrets sticking out of the water, Battles with young men risking and giving their lives in foreign countries, fighting with a sense of American patriotism. Murray Seaman was born in 1914. At the age of 27, he joined the Army. And after training, he became part of the sixth port of embarkation at Fort Hamilton in Brooklyn. He would stay with this Army unit until the end of the war. The 6th Port was responsible for the movement of the troops and supplies, loading and unloading the ships and watching over the troops from the port. The stories and memories of my father were so vivid and lively, it felt perfect to have them preserved in this way. It gives me great honor to donate this collection of Murray Seaman's stories, photos, and letters to the Veterans History Project. His words and images will continue to inspire more and more each day. Music has always been an important part of my life as a storyteller, so it was only natural to memorialize my father through song. With the help of the brilliant pianist Elise Solberg and Hannah Goldblatt on vocals, we are honored to debut this special performance. Both Elise and Hannah come from a family of veterans, which makes our collaboration even more meaningful. This is my grandfather, Seymour Goldblatt. He was drafted into the Army in 1955. He worked on um, testing equipment for atomic bombs. And his brother, Jerry, also was in the Navy on working on a battleship in communications during World War II. I've got a picture of my dad. He's playing the sax, tenor sax, and uh, looks like he's playing at a gig. Um, and I'm really proud of him. When did you find out your dad was a musical maestro? I mean, never since I started breathing and walking. <laughs> he would take me to his gigs and just, I would like admire him just from, you know, wherever I was sitting or standing and it was just the best of times and inspired me to play. This is my great uncle Harold and he is actually an American hero. He was a navigator during World War II in the Air Force and he had a pregnant wife back home waiting for him. He had just finished his service and was ready to head home, but he was really specialized in navigating, so he volunteered to stay for one last mission. And it was during that mission that their plane was shot down over Czechoslovakia, and a handful of the men were captured, a handful escaped, but 
Harold is wearing his Hebrew dog tag, so the Nazis um, killed him. And I also have a cousin, Sal, who was killed in combat, who risked his life to save the rest of his troop on a solo mission, so that's pretty cool. In Love and War was written by myself with the legendary Charles Fox. We hope you enjoy this performance as much as we enjoyed creating it for the 20th anniversary of the Veterans History Project. <laughs> Am I standing right in front of it? You got some back button, you got some front button, you're good. Uh, he's probably already recording. Okay. Alfredo, you good? Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's on you guys then. Cool. So I can start whenever? Absolutely. <laughs> strength within in love and war we'll win when we look up in the stars we know deep in our hearts that freedom will be ours the glory and the love that every man dreams of is inside each of us strength within in love and war will win. 